Hello and welcome to National Focus for Wednesday, April 3, 2024. I am Julian Morris. In the headlines, Dominica teachers explore the future of education through artificial intelligence. DBS launches 14th edition of National Reading Competition and 2024 hurricane season predicted to be above average. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. Ride safe, wear a helmet, safer roads in the nature aisle. This message was brought to you by the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Welcome back. The Dominica Association of Teachers hosted its 17th biennial convention at the Goodwill Parish Hall on Wednesday morning. The convention held under the theme Artificial Intelligence, Its Implications for Education, was deemed a great success. The implications of artificial intelligence go beyond just addressing plagiarism in education. When utilized effectively, AI has the potential to greatly impact future learning. By harnessing the power of AI in innovative ways, educators can unlock new avenues for enhancing the learning experience and preparing students for the challenges of tomorrow. Teachers may worry that students will become very reliant on AI tools, leading to a decrease in critical thinking and problem-solving skills. Again, to address these concerns of the dependency on technology, teachers can implement several strategies. One would be balance integration, proactive learning, encourage offline activities, teach digital literacy, and foster self-regulation. By taking these proactive approach to addressing dependency on technology, teachers can empower students to harness the benefits of AI while developing essential skills for lifelong learning and success. Teachers from across the country gathered to discuss the impact of artificial intelligence on education and to share insights on how to incorporate technology into the classroom. AI can provide personalized learning experiences tailored to each student's individual needs abilities and learning styles. Just imagine if you had to create um, what's the word, learning programs for the, all of the children and you had to write up, if they, if, let's say there were seven different profiles, just imagine how much time that would take. You can now use AI to assist you to create those profiles based on the particular profile of each and every student. For example, AI-powered adaptive learning platforms can assess a student's strengths and weaknesses and deliver customized lessons and exercises to help them master difficult concepts at their own pace. Not only benefit students by making learning more engaging and effective, but also empowers teachers by providing them with valuable insight into each student's progress and performance. Mr. Tong believes that artificial intelligence can meet the needs of a diverse range of students. AI-powered tools such as speech-to-text text-to-speech software can help students with disabilities or learning differences across access educational content more easily and participate in the classroom. So again, even persons with disabilities can use that to enhance their learning ability. I remember many of us back in the day, we used to hear, a lot of times we watch these movies and we see these things and we figure, boy, that, can never, that, that will never happen, it can never happen in now or in the future but we're seeing so many of these things come to pass. We see technology where persons would have someone speak it to a device, and the device will translate from English to French, and French to English. That is normal, that is normal right now. He says teachers should be encouraged to participate in professional development workshops with focus on AI education. These opportunities can provide valuable insights and practical strategies for incorporating AI tools into teaching practices. 
collaboration and networking. We don't know it all. Someone else may know it better than us. And as opposed to going through that learning curve, they can break down that learning curve if you work and collaborate. Facilitate opportunities for teachers to collaborate and share best practices with colleagues who are already using AI in the classroom. Networking events, online forums, or community groups can foster collaboration and peer learning. The 17th Biennial Convention of the Dominica Association of Teachers highlighted the potential of artificial intelligence in revolutionizing education and emphasized the importance of educators embracing technology for the benefit of students' learning experiences. The Dominica Broadcasting Station, in collaboration with the Ministry of Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training and National Excellence, have launched the 14th edition of the DBS Radio National Reading Competition. This year, the competition will be held under the theme Reading and Creole. Program Manager at DBS, Mrs. Ivona John Baptist Luge, says the reading competition is important as it is part of nation building. It is really a nation building product, the DBS Radio Reading Competition, because um, we realize uh, that reading fosters social change and advocacy. Reading is a crucial element of every child's education. Reading is not only essential to increase the knowledge of the pupils who will represent their respective schools, it is also crucial for the overall development of the country and this year, the focus on reading and Creole and the intention really when we see Creole is to help in the drive to, to have the schools embrace Creole. Coordinator of the DBS uh, National Reading Competition, Ms. Uh, Kushina Joseph, says the theme Reading and Creole is part of DBS's mandate to preserve the Creole language. DBS Radio is again pleased to stage the National Reading Competition in partnership with the Ministry of Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training, and National Excellence. Now in its 16th year, the competition continues the legacy of the late Felix Henderson, whose vision was to encourage reading among Dominican children for today and tomorrow. This year, we hold the competition under the theme Reading and Creole, as DBS Radio carries on its mission to preserve the Creole language. As part of the preparation for this year's competition, the organizing, team, the organizing team visited all primary schools around the island, meeting with principals, teachers, and students. We aspire to make this competition bigger and better every year. And as a team, we tasked ourselves to visit every primary school on the island. Beginning on February 19th and ending on March 22nd, we visited the 58 primary schools and out of these, we had meetings with 57 school administrators. Our meetings engaged principals, deputy principals, and teachers in charge, literacy coordinators, Peace Corps volunteers, and coaches. The team also met past participants who are now older, and some are preparing to write this year's grade six national assessment. Principals and teachers were also eager to share success stories of other participants who have gone on to higher education and are doing well for themselves. So it can be said that the National Reading Competition plays an important role in our children's education. Dragon Windows is the headline sponsor for this year's competition. Managing Director of Dragon Windows, Ms. Stella Zhang, says Dragon Windows believes that the ability to read must be a priority if the country's youth are to be successful. So when DBS Radio reached out to us this year, we happily came on board with the belief that for a younger generation to achieve what they want to achieve, the ability to read and read well must be made a priority. I wish to also recognize the efforts of DBS Radio in Dominica for the great work that they have done in keeping this reading competition alive. We thank them for affording us this opportunity to support this worthy activity this year and possibly more years to come. At Dragon Windows, by engaging in social activities that help building a caring and sustainable society, we can give back as well as make a positive impact way beyond the products that we sell and services that we provide. 
Meanwhile, Senior Education Officer in the Ministry of Education, Ms. Candy Robinson, thanked TBS Radio for its investment in the youth for 16 years, noting that the competition gives the youth a platform to showcase their talent. So I want to thank DBS for 16 years of investing in us, in the Ministry of Education, but most importantly, investing in our youth of today, who will be our leaders of tomorrow. The reading competition brings about showcasing students from all 58 schools, which is, you know, a feat. Um, that's one competition I know that every school partake in. They give excuses for other competitions, but at least for DBS really do. They do participate. And so whatever you all do, continue to do so because the schools are excited. They call our office because our office is the Curriculum Measurement and Evaluation Unit. So we are the ones responsible for the implementation of the curriculum into the classrooms. And they always call to ask, when is this competition? What dates? Unlike other times where you have to actually reach out to them. The 2024 transatlantic hurricane season is forecast to be an active season with signs indicating it may be above average this year. Senior Meteorological Officer Mr. Aitoma James released a statement on the forecast of the 2024 hurricane season. All signs are pointing towards us having a above average hurricane season and we just like to caution the public that not because we say we're going to have an above normal or below normal means that we can indicate or predict how many storms may affect Dominica directly but it just says that we need to be prepared and be cautious for the upcoming hurricane season. A number of measures have been put in place to advance Dominica's hurricane preparedness such as accurate weather mon monitoring and infrastructure. All over the past few years the government has taken the opportunity to try to implement some of the UN's policies on early warning for all and by that I mean we are trying to make sure that the preparation and the warning of persons for hurricanes and other tropical storms, um, people can get that information ahead of time so that they can be properly prepared, so that they can protect their lives and families. By doing so, we can save lives. I think one of the main things is the investment in this new building here, the building at Jimit, which is an upgrade to what we had as an uh, office in the past. We also have numerous stations which we can monitor the weather better from different communities. So that will give us a better indication as to how early different hazards are uh, happening and can at least tell the people in advance this is what to expect and be better prepared. So we have been trying to upgrade our early warning systems and we have made some tremendous steps in doing so so we can properly or we can better provide what we have to provide to the people. He provided details on the factors which could have contributed to the overcharged hurricane season. The sea surface temperatures, as many people know, is one of the main driving sources for hurricanes in the Atlantic. And this year we expect to have above normal sea surface temperatures. We already have above normal sea surface temperatures, which is already leading to indicate that we may have an earlier start to this year's hurricane season. Additionally, there is the forecast for the El Nino to be trans in a state of transition. This transition period tends to normally mean that we have higher amounts of hurricanes formed in the Atlantic. So with these two main factors showing that we can probably have above average seasons. Mr. James appealed to residents of Dominica to exercise vigilance and make adequate preparations for the 2024 hurricane season. Most of the, prepar the preparations that we can make right now is really to inform the general public. Let them know what is expected and also expect them to play their part because preparedness is not just on the part of the government or the Met Office. It is really an individual thing. Each individual needs to understand their risk and do what is needed to take care of their life and their property and that of their families. So we just intend to do some more public outreach, let people know what to expect 
and really just hope that they take it that information and understand the risk that we face this is not new risk to dominica this is something that we face every year so we expect people to be at this point a bit more understanding of what is expected to happen and just be prepared for what is to come he shared some hurricane preparedness tips to empower residents to act ahead of the hurricane season what we can do is start clearing our drains. These are basic things, things that can prevent roads from flooding and homes from flooding, cut the overhanging trees, make sure that you start stocking up on your goods. We know that times may be hard at times and you will not be able to buy <coughs> all of the things that you may need all in one. So it would be easier to have an earlier start in those sorts of preparations to make sure that it's easier to mitigate and bounce back in the case that we do have some sort of event. As they count down to hurricane season begins, individuals are encouraged to stay tuned to credible sources for hurricane updates this season. If you see information that you think may, you know, may be posing some sort of danger to you, you have the official source, which is the Dominica Meteorological Service, that you can go to. We have our Facebook page, we have Instagram page, we have our website. And you can just go to any one of those or you can listen to the radio just to verify that the information that you are seeing is indeed true before you start spreading information that you are not certain about. For official weather information, individuals can utilize the official sites or page of the Dominican Meteorological Service. Our official website is www.weather.gov.dm and also we are on Facebook at Dominica Met and on Instagram at Dominica Met. You can also follow our page or channel on WhatsApp. You are watching National Focus. More when we return. I love the freedom when I'm out there. Simply put, the war is from shore. None of that out there. And it's my daily bread. I learned it from my dad. My dad is one of the senior guys here who catch the biggest fish around here and he's top with the red snappers. It's a family thing. I'm the only one fishing right now in the family. Just keeping it going. I enjoy bringing them up, man. <laughs> Sometimes you have a yellowfin tuna, 400 pounds. Man, let me tell you, that's just a joy out there. I enjoy going out there and just holding the big fish. I don't lift weights, I lift fish. The morning of my fishing trip, I would get up, make a little spice tea. Then I come down here, I have my GPS, which most fishermen are supposed to have that. Normally I prepare the day before because whenever you go out there you must have ice, ice is a must for preservation of the fish. So I always make sure I have everything the day before. My fish represents me and I bring good quality fish ashore simply because the restaurants themselves, they have to show a quality product. Tourism and agriculture go hand in hand, that's what I think. We're all connected, it's, it's like a big machine and I'm just so proud to be a part of it. My name is Brandon Carlyle and tourism is my business. Welcome back. The government of Dominica will accord the late Vanus John Charles an official funeral in recognition of his outstanding contribution to Dominica's development in the field of agriculture. Mr. John Charles was a senator in the first parliament of Dominica from November 3, 1978 to June 21, 1979. Mr. John Charles of St. Joseph passed away on Thursday, February 29, 2024. He began his career in agriculture as a full-time citrus and banana farmer and was chairman of the Dominica Banana Marketing Corporation. He was also president of the Wind Islands, Winwood Islands Banana Growers Association, WINBAN. During his tenure, he was credited for increasing benefits to Winwood Islands farmers and expanding export volumes from Dominican growers. Mr. John Charles also served the state as chairman of the Police Service Commission and commissioner of the Integrity Commission and was the recipient of Dominica's second highest national honor, the Cicero Award of Honor, in 2008. He was actively involved in national politics and community activism and was an influen influential and highly respected member of the St. Joseph constituency. The government of Dominica extends heartfelt condolences to the family and friends of Mr. Vanos John Charles on his passing, may his soul rest in eternal peace. The passing of Mr. Elias Orville Dupi from Benz has deeply saddened the people of Dominica. He was described as creative, resourceful, kind, and genuine, 
and was seen as a positive influence on society. For the past two years, Elias worked as an investment promotions officer at the Invest Dominica Authority, where he focused on enhancing the organization's digital presence and overall brand through creating content. Elias also made significant contributions to sports in Dominica, serving as a basketball referee from 2019 to 2024. In honor of his dedication, the 2024 Knockout Cup will be named the Elias Dupe Cup. The government, of, the government Information Service extends heartfelt condolences to the family and friends of the late Mr. Elias Dupe. May his soul rest in eternal peace. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominica on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS News Production Team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching.